Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today I'll be ranking Linux distributions according to how well they function as servers. It's April of 2024. Fedora and Ubuntu dropped new releases this month, but I'm not interested in making a what's new video. The news channels already made them, and they're all the same. New GNOME, new kernel, new package versions, blah, blah, blah. There's plenty of distro tier lists out there too, but they're usually focused on desktop Linux, i.e. the distro you put on your laptop. There's a lot of competition in that space, but there are good reasons you might pick a different distro for your laptop than for your server. When you run a server, you're probably focused on security, stability, and support. You might have to comply with some kind of security standard Maybe you're using some software that is only available on one distro. Distro version updates involve a lot of testing to make sure everything you were doing on the current version still worked with the new version, and then fixing whatever doesn't. So you probably want those to be spaced out. Not every place has Linux server admins, so you might want a support contract in case you need tech support. I've got 12 distros here. So let's rank them according to what I think makes a good Linux server. Now, these are just my personal opinions based on my experience. I'd love to hear all about how I'm wrong in the comments. Engagement builds a channel, so go nuts. I've intentionally left out distros that are clearly desktop focused. They're pretty much always based on one of these anyways. So. I won't be talking about Elementary, Manjaro, Mint, Pop OS, Solus, Zorin, or whatever distro I forgot to mention. Let's just pretend I already put those in F tier because they're not server focused, and that's the point of this tier list. Let's start with Arch Linux. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a good one, right? I mean, it spawned the, by the way, I use Arch meme. It's the Linux that real nerds use. Surely this makes for a great server OS. I'm talking A tier, maybe S tier, right? It's gotta be. Well, sorry for Arch lovers, but Arch is going into F tier. Yeah, Arch simply doesn't fit my criteria for what makes a good server OS. Stability is simply out of the question on Arch. They update packages practically the minute the git commit is pushed. That is amazing if you want to test out the newest things, but for a server build, it's a recipe for disaster. You can't spend all your time debugging what's wrong because of a package update. And that is a lot of what you're going to have to do when you run Arch. Simply put, Arch, don't put on your servers. Just don't. Okay. Where do we go next? Ah, how about Fedora? I love Fedora. It is my favorite desktop Linux distribution. I've been using it on my laptop for more than five years now. And although I've tried several other distributions in that time, I always, always go back to Fedora. So how does my favorite desktop distro stack up on the server space? Oh, is it going to be an A tier, S tier here? Yeah, no, no. Remember, my qualifications for desktops and servers are different. And Fedora is a little bit like Arch in that it updates too frequently. It pushes the boundaries too much to make for a really stable server platform. You can run it on the server, and I wouldn't say it's a bad choice. It just wouldn't be my choice just because of how frequently they update. Other distros tend to backport kernel fixes. They tend to update the kernel. That can be a big problem on servers because kernel updates sometimes do make servers unbootable. You really don't want to mess around with your core component on a server if you can avoid it. So for me, Fedora, I love you on the desktop, but I'm going to have to give you a C ranking for server OSs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but remember, you're still my favorite desktop distribution. 
Let's go with Gen 2 next. I've got a lot of fond memories from running Gen 2 back in the day. I used it for more than 10 years and I absolutely loved it. Back then, you could see meaningful performance improvements simply by compiling your package for your specific system, rather than use a generic binary package from a distribution. There was a big difference between an original Pentium and a Pentium 4, but there aren't those kind of differences between the architectures for any of the Core i5s in the last 10 years. So those performance gains largely won't be realized for most packages, even if you compile them from source. Now Gen 2 had other benefits too. It had a lot of customizability, and the wiki was absolutely top tier. You could not beat that if you were trying to learn literally anything about Linux. Unfortunately, it went on a bit of a decline, and for a rolling release, it's largely been supplanted by Arch. Arch does binary packages, it's still a rolling release, and the Arch wiki is now the gold standard for documentation. However, Gen 2, I think, is still a little bit easier to specify which packages you want to update. And I do think they spend a little bit more time testing things, and they have a testing part and a stable packages part. So I would say that Gen 2 is a little bit above Arch for a server. I'm not saying use Gen 2 on a server, don't, but I'm going to put it in D tier rather than F tier with Arch. It's a little bit better. Not enough I'd ever use it, but there is a difference in my opinion. Okay, where are we headed to next? How about Ubuntu, the world's most popular Linux distribution, depending on what question you're asking and who you're asking and a lot of other things. But no one can deny Ubuntu is really, really popular. Definitely top tier, no matter what the tier is. If it involves Linux, Ubuntu is going to be in a top tier spot. So where do I rank it in my server distro list? Well, I like Ubuntu. Ubuntu makes a really good server OS. The LTS releases have pretty much everything I'm looking for. It's stable, it's secure, and it has support from Canonical. Hey, good job Ubuntu. I'm putting you right up here in A tier. So why don't I think it's S tier? It checked all my boxes. What's wrong with it? Well, I don't like the release schedule. I feel they have a very rigid adherence to it. And I have found in every single LTS release some kind of annoying breaking bug that they hadn't fixed yet. They always fix it later, but you can't even upgrade to the new LTS until the first point release comes out. That pretty much tells you Ubuntu themselves do not think that their LTSs are stable on day one. Well then, what are you releasing to me? Okay, it's fine. And definitely no reason not to use Ubuntu as a server OS. This is the first one I can actually recommend. Ubuntu, you're a good server OS. Okay, where to next? How about Red Hat? Ah, uh, yes, Red Hat. The distro everyone loves to hate. Not to brag, but I was hating on Red Hat before IBM made it cool. Red Hat's packages are tragically out of date, even on day one of a new release. And it only gets worse as time goes on. Towards the end of a RHEL release lifecycle, more and more things get harder to use. That being said, RHEL is a good server OS. It checks all the boxes, security, support, and stability. A 10-year release cycle is outrageous in the tech world, but Red Hat does it. And if you have some kind of enterprise software that needs a specific Linux distro, it's always RHEL. 
If you have some kind of security mandate, rail will always be an option, which is not true with all distros. Rail is solidly A tier. Now, without a specific reason, I would never choose it over Ubuntu. But it's still a great choice for a server OS. Speaking of things Red Hat related, what about CentOS? Well, as a RHEL rebuild, CentOS is dead. But CentOS Stream is still a thing. Should you use that on a server? Honestly, it's probably fine. I won't go into my thoughts on the whole IBM, Red Hat, CentOS changes here, but leave me a comment if you want to see a video about that. CentOS Stream is basically RHEL. If you don't need bug-for-bug -bug compatibility and you aren't tied to a security system that relies on RHEL, you probably won't even notice the differences. That being said, those are legitimate reasons not to want CentOS Stream, and there are others. Let's put it up in B tier. That seems pretty good to me. Okay, what about the rest of the RHEL derivatives? Oracle and Alma and Rocky. Are they good server OSs? Well, yeah, I mean, they're basically RHEL rebuilds. They're gonna be as good as RHEL, pretty much. So honestly, we're just going to put all of those up in A tier right alongside Red Hat because they're basically Red Hat. Are they identical? No, but they're close enough. Now, there are some minor differences. Alma doesn't have bug for bug compatibility because of some of the stuff that IBM did to its sources. And I've noticed uh, using Oracle, it's a little bit different, but Mostly, they're all the same, and they're all good. If I had to pick one, I would probably go with Rocky or Alma, just because I prefer community projects over corporate-led projects, because corporate-led projects always seem to uh, have some problem down the road that uh, we didn't think about in the beginning. RIP CentOS, I guess. But all of those are good, solid picks for server operating systems. If you need a replacement for CentOS and CentOS Stream doesn't work, pick any one of those and you'll be good to go. Okay, let's go with Sousa next. I had to get my hat change on for this one. And ironically, for the only Linux distro I have an actual hat for, I have never used Sousa in my life. I'm not even sure that's how you say it. Is it Sousa? Is it Susie? I think the company's German, so I'm going to go with Sousa, but I honestly don't know. And like I said, I've never used it, so it's probably a little unfair. I'm going to write this anyway, but uh, it is an enterprise Linux distribution, and what I understand is that it's much more popular in Europe than it is in the United States. So it's probably a great distribution just not one I'm that familiar with. So just because it's not popular where I happen to live, I'm gonna put it between A and B tier because I just don't have enough information. I think it's probably A tier, every bit as good as Red Hat, um, but I don't know. Is it more up to date than Red Hat, less? Um, is it more like Ubuntu? I don't know. All I know is it uses RPM, but doesn't use DNF or YUM. So that's the extent of my knowledge with SUSE. And by the way, I'm referring to OpenSUSE or SUSE Enterprise, not Tumbleweed, the rolling release. Do not use Tumbleweed on a server. That would be F tier, just like Arch and kind of like Gentoo. But I would put that in F tier for Tumbleweed. So there you go. My thoughts on the SUSE distribution that I have never used in my life. Okay, we're getting down to things now. Only two distros left to rank. So, what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Debian on the top spot or CoreOS? Maybe I put that S tier up there to fake you out and there are no S tier rankings. I guess we'll find out. Let's go with CoreOS, formerly known as Container Linux. 
There is a Fedora CoreOS, a CentOS Stream CoreOS, and a Rail CoreOS. Now, I've never actually used this, but I've been doing a lot of reading, and I like what I hear with respect to being a server distro. It's an incredibly minimalistic distro. It's designed to run container workloads, so Docker or Kubernetes, and that's pretty much all it does. All of the updates are done automatically and atomically. That's a fantastic security feature. I love that. I can't quite tell how different the versions of RHEL, CentOS, and Fedora are, but from what I've read, I would think any of these would make a fantastic server platform for running containerized workloads. So CoreOS, you're getting a solid A ranking from me, despite the fact I've never used you. Leave me a comment on what you think about that ranking and if I should have ranked it differently. Or if you have some concerns about the Fedora version. Should I have ranked it closer to the Fedora ranking? Or is my server ranking okay given the minimal nature of this platform? And that brings us to Debian, the universal operating system. At more than 30 years old, it's one of the longest surviving Linux distributions in existence. And Debian is absolutely top tier. I mean, Ubuntu is based on Debian, so Debian is going to have to be pretty high up there, right? Did I really make an S tier not to use it at all? Nah. Here you go, Debian. Congratulations you've earned your S-tier ranking. You are my go-to pick for Linux server distros. It is always the distro I will use anytime I'm building a new server. So why do I rank it above Ubuntu if Ubuntu is based on Debian? Well, it's the release cycle. Debian doesn't release things until they're ready. And that means I've never had a day one problem upgrading to any new Debian release. I simply can't say that about Ubuntu. So that makes me place it just a little bit higher. Now there's no commercial support from Conical like there is for Ubuntu, but there are Debian, uh, there are companies that support Debian Linux servers out there. So you can get support but you might be better off if you want support just going with Ubuntu and Canonical. Again, Ubuntu is a very good server distribution. I still like Debian a little bit more. And that's my Linux server tier list, at least as of April 2024. Maybe things will change for me in the future. Did you agree with my list? Leave a comment, let me know why, or why not? I love engaging with my audience. Did I leave off your favorite distribution? I want to hear about that too. Maybe there's something new I should be trying out. For now, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps out the channel. And that's mostly what I'm here for anyway. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.